Hey everyone, so what we're gonna go through today is my top brush recommendations when it comes to having a basic brush set for yourself. I get a lot of questions on what are the most important brushes to have, so I thought I'd do a video on the basic set and later on I'll do a, a video on a more professional set. Now when it comes to your brushes, I definitely say invest in a good quality set of brushes. Um, now, whether that be you have to purchase them one by one like I did, um, or you buy a brush set, make sure that they are um, not machine cut brushes. So when you go to the store and you see those holiday sets that have those miniature brushes, um, they're usually machine cut because they're made in such a mass quantity. So when it comes to the edge of the actual brush, the hairs aren't actually tapered like they are naturally. They're cut so it's more of a blunt edge. So you don't get as good results with it as you could possibly get. So definitely, definitely look at your brushes as an investment. If you purchase a good quality set, it can last you from like 10 to 20 years as long as you take good care of it. Now all of the brushes that I'm gonna be featuring in this video are by MAC, um, but you don't have to purchase MAC brushes. They're not the only good quality brush out there on the market, um, but I'll be saying the numbers and it's very easy to just Google a duplicate for that brush um, in a, another line. So what we're gonna start with is your basic three brushes for your eyes. And when you're doing your eyeshadow, basically it's broken into what goes on your eyelid, what goes into the crease, under the brow, um, and then your eyeliner. So for the eyelid and under the brow, you can get away with using the same brush. And I like to use the 239 brush. So basically the thing about this brush is that it's flat and it's dense. So it'll pick up eyeshadow really well and it'll place it down. It's smaller so that it fits your eyelid. And then I like the rectangular shape to it because when you go under the brow, you can just sort of fit it in right there. And another thing about this brush is it's natural hair brush. So uh, for natural hair, it's very easy to pick up powder products because the eyeshadow actually disperses itself throughout the natural um, follicles. Um, if you had a synthetic brush, it would just sort of sit on the top, so when you would put it down, it would fall out over here. Now when it comes to the crease, I like to use something that's a little bit more dome-shaped, something like this. Now this one I really like, it's a 217. It's, not only is it rounded at uh, the tip, it's a little bit more of a rectangular shape, so when you put it right into your crease, it fits really nicely into that socket, so you can kind of go back and forth, back and forth. And because it's flatter this way, when you turn it, you can then, whatever was left on your brush, go like this and it'll disperse the remaining product onto above the crease line. So like right there. So that's what I like about this because it's pretty versatile because of its shape and it, it's also a natural hair brush as well. For eyeliner, I like to use a synthetic eyeliner brush. This is an angled brush. It's the number 263 from MAC. And the reason why I like synthetic brushes for eyeliner is because if you're going to use uh, whether it be powder or a cream or gel or liquid or whatever, you really want to have a very sharp edge. So when you're using a natural hair brush, whenever you clean it or wash it or whatever and you reshape it, eventually those bristles are going to start to spread apart and you won't get as sharp of an edge as you, um, are, as you did when you first bought it. So the good thing about synthetic brushes is that they will maintain their shape throughout the life of the brush. So I've had this brush, I don't know, maybe for four or five years and if you see it right now, it's still like perfectly um, sharp at the edge. So um, another thing I like about angled eyeliner brushes is that if you think about the way your eye is shaped, it's not flat straight across, it comes out like this. So using an angled brush, you can then sort of follow the contour and it's a lot easier to manipulate. So I'll have the tip facing one way and then when I get to a certain point, I flip the brush over. And also with the angle, you can get a much sharper edge over there when you wanna do more of like a cat eye effect. Okay, now we're moving on to the face brushes. And the first one I wanna talk about is the concealer brush. And um, this one is one of my favorites, it's the 195, it's a synthetic hair brush. Thing that I really like about it is that it's thicker, but it's got a nice pointy edge right over here. So you can really fit it into different spots. And another thing that's good about the tip is that if you have any blemishes, like the one that I'm rocking right here right now, um, you can just apply it to the tip right there and then just blend the edges. So it really works well for 
pretty much any of your concealer needs. And it's also a synthetic hair brush. Like I've mentioned in my other videos, I like synthetic hair brushes for cream and liquid products. Synthetic bristle brush will not get gunked up with all that liquid and cream. You'd wash it, it'll just come right off. The next brush that we're gonna talk about is a foundation brush. Now this one is pretty basic. You can find this brush pretty much in any line. It's got a rounded edge, um, and uh, if you wanna avoid those streaky foundation marks, what I suggest you do is kinda go back and forth like an X, and that'll blend it out really nicely. And that's a synthetic hairbrush as well. Now when it comes to your face powder or using a powder foundation, you wanna use a big size fluffy brush, something like this. This is the 150 brush. And I like this brush for powders because having um, a much larger area to cover because you're using a powder that's gonna go all over your face, you want to be able to blend it really nicely. So because the bristles are actually a little bit looser, they're not so compact like other brushes, you can pick up some of your powder, you put it down on your face, and it won't put a big glob over here, and you won't be sitting there like blending it out for hours. It's pretty good for just like spreading product all over your face. And this is a natural hairbrush, so it's good for powder products. Now for your blush, uh, there are a number of different shaped brushes that you can use for your cheeks. For a basic blush brush, I really like something shaped like this. This is the 129 brush from MAC. And the reason why I like this brush is that it'll fit really nicely onto the cheek. If you look at the width of it, it fits like right perfectly into the amount of space that you want it to fit. And the rounded edges will give you a nice sort of blended edge to your blushing. And it'll make your blush look a, a lot less streaky when you apply it. So it's very good for blending. And a tip for applying your blush is you want to load your brush up, but then tap off as much as you possibly can so that your brush is nice and evenly covered. So when you go to apply your blush, you're not putting more on one spot and less on the other. So, so this is like the most basic blush uh, brush you can get. Um, and so many different lines have brushes um, that are shaped the same way. Now for your lips. Not a lot of people do actually use lip brushes. Um, I use lip brushes when I'm actually doing makeup applications on other people. Now when it comes to using a lip brush on myself personally, um, the circumstances in which I usually use a lip brush is if I'm applying a really bold color like a red or a fuchsia or something like that, or if I'm going to a party and I'm using one of those lip palettes, like you know the ones that are like rectangular and they come with five or six different lip um, colors in them. The one that I like is the 316 and the reason why I like this brush um, is because it's collapsible. So you can just sort of put this in here and then you pop it into your purse so it's nice and small, fit into any purse. And because it's closed at the edge over here, you don't get all that gunk in there, like from whatever's in your purse, like lint and junk like that. <laughs> so it keeps your brush nice and protected and nice and clean. And then when you open it up, you can just put it in the end and you get more stability with um, uh, applying your lipstick and more control as to where it goes. So I really like the 316 brush and it's also a synthetic brush as well. So those are my brush recommendations when it comes to building a basic brush set for yourself. Start with those brushes and then we'll move on to more professional brushes for when you want to get into more detailed techniques and such. But definitely, definitely, definitely your brushes are your most important investment when it comes to your makeup. And I still have some of those brushes from when I first started uh, collecting them. And I'll do another video as well on how to properly care for and clean your brushes. So. Uh, you know um, how to prolong the life of your brush. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. See you guys later. It'll clog the pores of the hair because they're actual human, not human hair. Oh my God. Don't chintz out on them. Save up. Should I say chintz?